Welcome to module 10. Here we land on another fundamental concept in the world of finance, CAPM. CAPM stands for the Capital Asset Pricing Model. And it just it examines the uh, relationship between risk of an investment and the expected return of an investment. And so, and of course it's very mathematical as, as so many things in finance are. So, uh, there's this cap M formula that you'll want to be familiar with. If I had like a cheat sheet or a formula sheet, I was allowed to use, I, this would be on the list of formulas I would write down and have knowledge of heading into my finance exam. I want to explain the components of the cap M formula. So here's the formula, but it's a bunch of Greek <laughs> to me. Anyway, there's some literal Greek letter in it. Um, here uh, we go. So the first, what we're solving for is the expected, <laughs> expected return of an investment of an individual investment. And so obviously that's something you're very interested in as an investor, you want to know what, uh, expected, what kind of return you can expect. So that equals RF, the risk free rate. And the idea with the risk free rate is you could invest in the typical example given is U S government T bills. And let's just say the U S government T bill is giving you 4%. Well, if you want me to buy shares of a company or, or bonds of some hell, you know, you want me to, to buy uh, some other investment, you got to beat 4%. If it's not going to beat 4%, no reasonable person would invest when they could basically risk free uh, invest in the U.S. government and uh, get their 4%. So the risk free rate is just uh, a baseline rate. So you better be making more than 4% uh, plus beta of the investment. So the uh, lowercase i is like the investment that you are analyzing, right? The company you're considering, I'm thinking about buying stocks in Coca-Cola, right? The, the, the beverage. Uh, okay. So the, the expected return of Coca-Cola stock equals the risk-free rate, the U S government T-bill rate plus beta of Coke. Um, and we'll put some numbers in here in a minute. Um, uh, and what is beta? Beta is a measure of risk, and it's really a measure of variability. And the idea here is, let's say the stock market goes up by 5%. What do we expect Coke stock, Coca-Cola, or whatever individual investment we're going to examine? Do we expect Coke stock to go up by more than 5% or less than 5%? Is Coke stock swingier or less swingy? than the uh, average, you know, in the market. And I'll just tell you, Coke stock is traditionally less swingy. So if market's going up or market's going down, Coke is steady eddy. And I guess the idea is whether the US or the world is in an economic boom or an economic recession, we buy the boat the same amount of Coca-Cola, right? Coke isn't swinging up and down. It's just very steady. And so it would have a very low beta because beta is a measure of variance. So a beta of 1.0 means the stock is exactly as swingy as the market. If the market goes up, we expect the stock to go exactly the same. If the market goes down, we expect the stock to go down exactly the same. Um, so Coke, we would think what the beta here would be less than one. In other words, one is exactly the same as the market. 0 0.6, say, would be less than the market. Uh, less swingy than the market. And if it was like 1.6, that's much more swingy than the market. So, uh, stocks like Coke or maybe utilities, you know, like the electric company or electric companies you can invest in. Well, you know, whether, you know, there's, there's a recession on, well, you still got to keep the lights on. You still got to, you know, turn on your air conditioner when it's hot. Uh, so the electric company utilities are thought of as low beta investments because they're not swinging. Well, what are high beta investments? Tech companies are a great example of a high beta investment. You know, um, if markets are ripping, if markets are going up, typically tech companies are outperforming. And when markets dip, 
typically tech companies fall faster. So Netflix is a, an example of a company that like when things are good, Netflix goes whoop, <laughs> up faster. When things are bad, it goes down faster. And you can think of myriad other tech companies that would fit this description. So B is for beta. And that's just the word we use beta. And that's a measure of the, again, the volatility of a stock and the volatility is, is a risk measure. Um, so beta of the investment, right? The, again, Coke in our example, times the expected market return. So again, sort of an average market return. minus that risk-free rate again. Now this, what's in brackets, actually has a, a phrase. So the expected market return, let's just say, we expect the market to return 10%, talking round numbers. The market return is 10% on average, the average company uh, listed in this uh, index or whatever in this uh, stock market, we, we would expect to see it the total market be 10%. And our risk free rate, the UST bill rate, let's just say it's 4%. So let's in my pretend example, let's use Coke as our pretend example. So okay, well, let's figure out the expected return of Coke. Uh, let's say the risk free rate is 4%. Coke's beta is low. Let's just say it's, again, I'm making up numbers, but let's say it's 0 0.7. And that can be measured, right? You can look at the historical performance of the company and say, well, when the stock market went up, you know, one day to the next went up by 2%, Coke only went up by 1%, say, and then, you know, you take that relationship, it's variances and covariances. And, you know, it, it, it's for a more advanced finance class to actually calculate that in our class, you'll be given the number for beta, but Coke is less swinging. And let's just say the measure is 0 0.7 uh, times expected market return minus risk free rate. Let's say the expected return in the markets right now is 10%. The risk free rate is again, 4%. They call this, uh, what's in brackets, the market risk premium. And the idea is how much money are you getting by having your stock or your money invested in the markets as opposed to buying US Treasury bills or something risk free? And the answer is you're getting a 6% bonus by taking on risk. That's why they call it a market risk premium. So let's look up. Uh, the expected return for Coke, 4% plus 0.7 times 6%, 0.7 times 6 is 4.2. 4 plus 4.2 is 8.2%. So there you go. That's it. We have solved, uh, we've used, and so, so the math here isn't hard, right? We've used the cap M formula. This is the capital asset pricing model and coming up with those components can be challenging, especially beta, although any big public company, you can just look up the beta, right? It's, it's, uh, you can find the betas of various, uh, companies. Okay. Um, so it shouldn't be lost on you. This actually has the components of the formula for a line. You know, if you think back to your algebra class, y equals mx plus b. Well, here's our y equals mx plus b. You know, it's, it's a little out of order here, but this is y, uh, this is b, right? This is our intercept. Uh, this is our x, and what's in brackets is our m. <laughs> So the risk, uh, market risk premium, sort of this whole thing is M. Um, so we got a formula for a line and some smart person said, well, why don't I show them with the cap M formula as a line? And they call it, they give it a name. It's called the security market line. Y equals MX plus B. And here is roughly what it looks like. So I'm going to assume our risk free rate is 4%. And so I'm going to put a point there on my line and the point there says, um, at zero beta at no risk, I can get 4%.
by, again, buying U.S. Treasury bills or whatever the equivalent risk-free investment might be. And it might be lower than that right now. But let's just say our risk-free rate is 4%. It gives us something to talk about. Um, let's say the market average return, as I discussed last time, maybe 10%. It's, it's probably less than this. Again, I'm not giving exact numbers here because it can change over time. But let's just say the uh, return in the market is 10% of the you know, overall market. Well, I've got two points in a line here, right? I've said, well, at one, which is the average risk in the market, I get the average return of the market, which I've said is 10%. Again, we can figure out what those actually are. Well, now I can draw a line, right? Like literally a line. I got two points in the line and I can draw a line. Let's see if I can make these connect. There we go. Good enough. So there we go. I've got my security and they call this line the security market line and the idea is if you've got a stock and let's just say i have a stock with a 0.8 beta and for whatever reason it's getting 12 percent return well what's going to happen to that stock if our markets are efficient and i think we can assume they are reasonably efficient they're not perfectly efficient but they're reasonably efficient well people will see investors aren't stupid they will look at this and they'll go my god that stock is wildly outperforming expectations, right? A stock with a beta of 0.8 should be returning like 8.75% or something. You could put the numbers into the um, cap M and they'll look at it and they'll go, my God, it's returning 12%. And what will they do? They will buy the stock and there will be pressure on the stock price pushing it up because there will be demand for the stock, right? More and more people buying and the bidding price will go up. And what will eventually happen is the stock price will rise. And once the stock price rises, returns are inversely correlated to that. The return will go down. So in other words, if I have a $100 stock uh, that is giving a... 20% return and this exact same stock, but the market realizes, oh my God, it's a 20% return. And they start bidding it up and they bid up the price to $200. Well, okay, 20% return on a $100 stock is $20 annual return. Well, if they bid up the price to $200 and it's still the same $20 return, all of a sudden it's a 10%. And, and so that's how markets work, right? And so if the, uh, uh, expected return of a stock is above the line, markets will just pound it down to the line. They'll, they'll if we assume markets are efficient and we do, uh, the price will, will adjust. And the same thing if the price is below the security market line, right? If it's somewhere down there, what'll happen is people aren't stupid. They'll look and they'll go, I'm not getting sufficiently rewarded for the risk that I'm taking on. And they'll sell the stock. There will be downward pressure on the price. And if there's downward pressure on the price, it's an inverse of this. There will be upward pressure on the, uh, uh, expected return. So I know it's a bit of a long intro video this time, but I hope it was useful because it's a fundamental concept. You're going to want to understand this cap M formula. You're going to be working with it this chapter for sure. And it would be useful if you understood how the security market line worked. Lots of examples this chapter. I can't wait to get started.